Now, another application of the divergence theorem pertains to heat conduction. Or, I guess, perhaps more generally, conservation of energy um, without any um, motion. So it pertained to conservation of energy within a continuum um, material like a fluid, um, but that fluid or that continuum material is not moving. So we'll start with uh, Fourier's law of conduction, of heat conduction. So that states that the heat transport, Q, is proportional or well, is equal to minus the thermal conductivity times the gradient in temperature. So Q is the heat flow in uh, watts. This is an energy flow, so it's watts per meter squared. And uh, grad T is the temperature gradient and uh, K was the thermal conductivity. So Fourier's law states that the heat will flow down the temperature gradient. It's this minus sign means it's flowing opposite the temperature gradient. So if I were to draw temperature contours, uh, so this is hot, warm. Uh, this is a hot contour. This is a less hot contour. And this is a cool contour. So the gradient well, downhill is pointed in the direction of these ticks. And of course, the gradient of T points uphill, whereas the flow of heat is from hot to cold. It points directly downhill of the temperature gradient. OK, so the heat energy Uh, contained in a control volume. So it's an imaginary surface enclosing an, a volume that doesn't interact with the heat flow or, or the material. So this heat energy contained within the control volume is big H. And that's equal to the integral over the volume of the mass density, sigma, times the heat capacity, C, times the temperature. So sigma is the mass density in kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, C is the heat capacity. And the units here are joules, which is a measure of heat energy or energy uh, per cubic, oh, per kilogram per unit of mass. And the rate change in heat is equal to the rate change of this integral. And we're, since we're going to define our control volume as uh, fixed, that is, it's stationary and it doesn't change size, so therefore the change in heat 
is not due to any change in the control volume. It's related to a change in uh, r sigma, not rho. I've written rho here. Sigma C T D T D V. So a statement of conservation of energy is that the rate increase of heat in our control volume V is equal to the net conduction out of our control volume I'm sorry, the rate increase in heat is equal to the rate of net conduction into our control volume. Plus any heat created, for example, by a chemical reaction. And we can write that as the, so the rate of increase in heat is given as the integral that we just wrote down, integral over the volume. And I'm, so this is a partial derivative of time because the volume is fixed and our position is fixed. So the only thing changing is time, not position. Um, and that's integrated over the volume, and that's equal to the net influx of heat um, across the surface of the volume. plus the integration of any heat source term within the volume. So S is the closed, or it's the surface enclosing our control volume. And N hat is normal to the surface S. So this describes the net heat flux conducted out of the surface. And with the minus sign, it describes the, neat, the net heat flow by conduction into the surface or into our volume. So here again, we have an equation stating uh, a conservation of energy uh, due to conduction and due to a heat source. And if we wanted to um, use this equation to model temperature, for example, um, we would need to solve this equation. But an integral equation is often uh, more difficult, difficult to solve. And the other aspect you'll see is that the integrals are different. We have two integrals over our control volume, uh, the one describing the rate change in heat in the control volume, and one describing the integrated heat sources in the control volume. But we have a third integral that involves a surface integral. So we're going to use divergence, the divergence theorem to replace this surface integral with a volume integral and use that to eliminate the integrals all together. So using the divergence theorem,
we see that the integral over the surface of n hat dotted with q, that is the component of q passing through the surface, is equal to the integral over the whole volume of the divergence of q. And if we make this substitution, we get three volume integrals. I keep wanting to write rho for density, but I'm using sigma for density. And since they're all volume integrals, we can express that equation um, under the same integral sign. So we have the partial of sigma ct with respect to t uh, equals minus the divergence of q plus f integrated over the whole volume. You know what, I better, um, I better put the equal sign out of the integral. So we have, we have um, the partial t, the rate change in heat plus the divergence of q minus f, to put everything on the same side of the equal sign, is equal to zero. Okay, so one very important aspect of this derivation is that our control volume is uh, of any shape or size. And this integral is equal to zero no matter what the shape or size is. So you can imagine, for example, we have a situation where um, there is some part of the volume where the integral or integrand is greater than zero. And we may have another portion of the volume where the integrand is less than zero. And that's all contained in our control volume. V. And I guess everywhere outside of these two areas, um, the integrand is zero. So if we integrate over the volume in this situation, if the the portion where the integrand is greater than zero is equal to the portion where the integrand is less than zero, then it's possible that these two volumes can cancel out and we'll get zero for the integral. But that's for a very specific control volume. If we were to, to, to use a different control volume that looked like this, for example, then the integrand would not equals zero because we would encompass a certain part where the integrand, sorry, the integral would not be zero for this control volume because we're overlapping with an area where the integrand itself was positive and, and we're leaving out this portion uh, where the integrand is negative. So this must, because this integrand is equal to zero no matter what, no matter what our control volume is, then this must mean that the um, integrand must be zero everywhere for the whole integral to equal zero, no matter the size or shape of V. And so that leaves us with a partial differential equation.
of the rate change in mass, or sorry, the rate change in heat energy is equal to minus the divergence of Q plus our heat source term. And we can also substitute, substitute Fourier's law, which is thermal conductivity times the minus the gradient of T, and we get a partial derivative partial differential equation involving only temperature plus these material properties. And the positive sign turns into a neg, so the negative signs on this cancels with the negative sign out, outside of there, outside of that second term, to give a positive second term plus F. And so this is the um, equation for T due to conduction with a heat source. This is the general equation. And for example, a simplification occurs if C uh, sigma and K are uh, constant in time and uniform in space, then we have the partial derivative of T with respect, partial derivative of temperature with respect to time is equal to kappa times the Laplacian of T plus F. And I'm noticing, I, I forgot to write that this is still a divergence. Um, so I need the divergence of Q, and Q is minus K times grad T. Um, and when these properties are constant and uniform, we get a, a slightly simpler equation, where kappa is equal to the thermal diffusivity And that's equal to thermal conductivity over sigma times C. And so these are, this, this may be, this is a simpler equation that, uh, because it is simpler, it tends to appear more frequently in our sciences. But in general, the more complete equation for conservation of energy is given by this one. Okay, so that was an, applic an application in which we used uh, the divergence theorem to convert an inter integral equation into um, a partial differential equation that can be more readily used to model variations in temperature.